All right, let's talk about photography. What's going on everybody? It has been a very long time since we've last seen each other. If you're not already following me on social media, make sure that you uh, type that into your cellular device so that we can stay updated on uh, all the stuff that I've got going on right now. My name is Quintavious Oliver, but you can just call me Q. And uh, today we're going to talk about my favorite camera of 2020, possibly my favorite digital camera of all time. And uh, that is the Leica M10. Now, this is not the brand new M10R that just came out. This is not the M10P. This is not the M10 monochrome. This is simply a Leica M10. And some of you might be wondering why in September of 2020, three years after this camera has come out, I'd be willing to make a video about it right now. Most digital cameras today suffer from what's called digital rot. And that's to say, when a new camera comes out, if one comes out today, within six months, it's old news. There's new tech out. And uh, that really has made me hesitant to buy anything new. Um, I don't really care about all the bells and whistles and the next greatest and latest new thing that's come out. I just want my camera to work. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I've picked this camera as my favorite camera pretty much ever. Um, now, if you've been following me on social media for any amount of time, you'll know that I am no stranger to the Leica M system. In fact, this has been my go-to camera pretty much since day one, and maybe not this exact one, but this is my Leica M7. I've been using rangefinders uh, pretty much for the last decade. Started out with an old Zorky that worked for all of three days, moved up to a uh, Voigtlander Bessa R4A, uh, and then finally to a Leica M6 and never looked back. In fact, uh, I actually sold all the Canon DSLR equipment that I had uh, for a Leica M8, which was largely inferior to anything that I owned at the time, but the colors that came out of that camera were phenomenal, providing you use the weird infrared cut filter that was required to get any type of accurate color with that camera. Uh, fast forward about a decade later, and I'm pretty much right back where I started. Maybe not with the M8, but I've given up searching for something that doesn't exist in Nikon or Sony or Canon or even Fujifilm and gone with something very simple. I've gone with what I know. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys the top five reasons why I fell in love with this camera and why I think it's the best camera, at least for me, even in 2020. Now, with this camera having been out for three years now, there are plenty of videos on YouTube by very talented people who can give you all the tech specs. But I'm going to give you my top five reasons why I fell in love with this camera, and that's starting with the simplicity. Now, a couple of days ago, I got a phone call from a friend who just bought a Sony a7R4, and he says to me that he thinks that camera's too fiddly, it's too much going on, and I'd have to agree with him. I've used Sony cameras, I'm filming on one right now, um, I'm no stranger to them, I don't like them, and for no other reason than they just are doing way too much short of making me breakfast in the morning. I don't need in-body stabilization. I don't need optical stabilization in my lenses. I don't need 4K video. I don't need eye tracking. That's cool if you like that kind of stuff, but it's not gonna make me or anybody else a better photographer. It might make things more convenient, but for me, I feel like it gets in my way and that's why I really love this thing. It doesn't do anything I don't need it to do. Essentially, you can pull this thing out of the box brand new and never have to actually open the menu system to operate this camera at optimal capacity. Uh, it's got a simple aperture ring right here, a focus ring right here. It's got your ISO dial right there and your shutter speed dial right there. The shutter button it's nice and tactile. And you've got just a few buttons here on the back. Now, I never thought I'd fall in love with a camera that has a screen on it, but all things considered, they haven't done anything different to what I'm used to. I mean, if you look at these cameras side by side, 
there's not a whole lot of difference. I mean, I think they stuck with what they do best. They didn't change anything, and that's amazing. I mean, this design dates back to 1953, I believe, and uh, it works for me. I mean, it's been working for a lot of amazing photographers since then, and uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The next reason I love this camera is a pretty obvious one, but it's the image quality. Now, this is simply a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, and in 2020, that's not really a big deal considering the M10R just came out and it's got almost double that resolution. There are cameras out that have triple that resolution. There are medium format cameras right now with 150 megapixels. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm not printing anywhere near large enough to need a camera with that type of resolution. And if I do find myself in a situation where I do need to print that large, I'll go rent a camera. But for what I'm doing in my workflow and my computer's sake, I don't need extra large files. This thing will make prints plenty big. Uh, as far as I've printed, I think I've done the largest print at maybe four or five feet long uh, out of a 24 me megapixel sensor. And I can print far larger than that if I use a 35 millimeter negative or medium format film. Uh, the image quality that comes out of this dated sensor is absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, the high ISO is perfect. I think I've shot everything up to uh, ISO 6400. And coming from a film background, I like to keep things simple. Is this camera capable of going past that? Absolutely. You'll get amazing usable files. But again, I want to keep things simple. I don't want to have to worry about, am I going to go way past ISO 6400? I'm not trying to see somebody's past, present, and future, nor do I need night vision on my camera. It works. It's just as simple as that. Um, now, another reason why I really love this camera is the colors. Now, I am colorblind, and that doesn't mean that I can't see color, but it does mean that my eyes don't exactly register color the same way uh, they're supposed to or like everyone else's. I'm red-green deficient, so when I edit people's skin tones, it doesn't always work out for me, and that's one reason why I've always loved shooting film. I can shoot it, develop it, scan it, and print it, and don't have to do anything to it and people's skin or the landscape or whatever colors are going on in that picture work just fine. It's very difficult, at least for me, to find a digital camera in which the sensor can actually replicate colors accurately. Um, to date, the best one that I've seen is the Leica M9 and we all know about the uh, CCD corrosion issues and the fact that that camera was trash past ISO 800, so doing anything in low light was pretty much out of the question. Uh, all of those issues were fixed with the Leica M10. Now, I want to back up for a second and say that uh, I did buy this camera with my own money. I'm not sponsored. Leica is not paying me to say any of this stuff. God, I wish they would send me some stuff, but uh, maybe we'll cross that bridge when we get to that. Uh, I actually first used this camera back in 2018 at the Leica store in Boston. I was up there for a friend's art exhibition and... Uh, we went on a photo walk the next day and I had the opportunity to take the Leica M10 around the city of Boston. Now that's an amazing city and if you haven't visited, please do check out the Leica store up there, some great people. Uh, but I had a lot of fun wandering around with this camera and it made me really appreciate the subtle advances they've made in technology like the Wi-Fi or the longer battery life. And honestly, that's really all I need in a camera is, does it work? Does it make good pictures? Could I possibly use some modern technology? And uh, can I shoot in low light? Yeah. Now, reason number four I love this camera is the build quality. Now, this thing is pretty solid, and I've taken my Leica cameras all over the world with me. I've put them through their paces. I've beat them up. I've drugged them pretty much through the mud, and I've only had one fail on me, and that's when I pointed the lens into the sun trying to get some solar flares and the lens was so sharp the glass was so clear that it actually burned a hole through the shutter uh i managed to patch it up myself the camera worked just fine but uh, i don't think that's a knock against the build quality of like if anything i think that's something to be said about a lens that uh is that sharp now uh i guess we'll see if this camera will hold up to the tests that this one has but if you look close, this one's 
seen some stuff. Now, this is black chrome. Both of them are, so you're not going to get any of that fancy uh, patina that you see on some of the black paint Leica. Uh, but honestly, I don't care. You know, I mean, this thing, both of these things will take a beating and keep on ticking. I've shot both of them in the pouring rain. I've shot them in blazing heat. I've shot this one in dirt, dust, uh, and never had a failure out of it. So um, that's something to be said about these cameras. The last reason I really love these cameras is the lens selection. Now, like I said, this design has been a staple for Leica since the 1950s. And that means I can use pretty much any lens I want from 1950 to now, uh, with the exception of a few odd lenses here and there. But when I find an old lens, I just pop it on here and it works. Now, a lot of times Leica glass can get extremely expensive and I've actually wanted this 28 millimeter Simicron for a very long time. I had to work a lot and save up a lot of money to get this lens. But before that, I was able to use lenses from Zeiss, Voigtlander, and even a few uh, knockoff companies like Seven Artisans or TT Artisans, which are anything but knockoffs. I'm actually uh, working on a video right now for their 50 millimeter 1.1 that is coded like a Noctilux. And my God, that thing makes amazing pictures. And for only $200, last time I checked that lens was around $12,000. Um, as far as I know, there's no other company that's doing stuff like that. And that makes this camera all the more worth it. The last reason I really love this camera is the price. Now that might sound silly talking about a Leica camera because oftentimes these things are absurdly priced. But one of the reasons I'm making this video here in 2020 is that the M10R just came out and a lot of people are dumping these cameras for the new latest and greatest thing, of course, because everyone wants the newest kid on the block. That means that you can get these things used for a steal. Now, I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for mine, but it was less than half of what they went for new, uh, what they currently go for new, actually. Um, and I couldn't have asked for a better deal. And if you search hard enough or you win at eBay, you can find these things for less than what you would pay for a brand new pro DSLR. And for a lot of people, that makes sense because we don't need all the pro features that these DSLRs have. Again, I don't need in-body stabilization. I don't need eye tracking. I don't need all the bells and whistles that come in some of these Sonys and Fujis and Nikon. I just want a camera that works. And this ticks all the boxes for me. I like that it's simple. I like that it's unobtrusive. That does not make you invisible. I will talk about being invisible as a street photographer or any photographer in another video. Uh, but I like this just because it works and it fits the way I shoot. Now, does that mean you should buy a Leica M10? Uh, here in 2020, I think absolutely. If you can afford it, if that's the way you shoot, uh, it's an investment. It is not something that I feel like you just go out and photograph lampposts and signs with. I think this is something that you should really give thought to and every picture that you make should mean something, should feel like something. Uh, that's not a knock against people who like to just photograph colors. I mean, a lot of people just have money like that in their bank account where they can spend an absurd amount of money on something to photograph their feet and shadows on the wall. Uh, I'm not one of those people. So if I'm going to spend the amount of money that this camera costs, I'm going to use the hell out of it. And I'm going to make sure I'm photographing some meaningful stuff. And I think if your aim is to do just that, whether it's in terms of landscape photography or architecture or portraiture, this is the perfect camera for you. Um, that being said, this is a camera that has its quirks, that has soul to it. It has character and personality. It is not simply a utilitarian tool. Uh, it is something that a lot of people feel connected to. And I think if you get a chance to pick one up and shoot around with it, you'll understand why. This is not for everybody, uh, but it is for me. And I think we're going to hold on to this one for a while. If you guys have any questions or comments about this camera, please leave them below. Make sure you check out the link in my bio uh, for my blog and full write-up on this camera. And check out my Patreon for all the photographs that I can't post on YouTube because... Uh, I'll get banned. That being said, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell so you guys can stay updated because I will be posting many, many more videos just like this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time.